Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. We praise God for he is good. He is wonderful and a God is spirit. And those who worship let us worship in spirit and truth. I welcome you all to this holy sanctuary and in the name of father son and the holy spirit let us begin the worship let us pray standing on the promises of christ my king through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Lord, your word says, sing for joy to God our strength, shout aloud to the God of Jacob, begin the music, strike the trampoline, play the melodious harp and love. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you, O Father. Lord, singing and worshiping you, O Father. And Lord, we glorify your name on the Most High, Lord. And Lord, I commit today's worship unto your holy hands, O Father. Lord, I commit all those who have come here, O Lord, and all those who are watching online, O Master. And Lord, we commit our pastoral team to O Father. Lord, our offerings and our hearts, mind, and soul unto you, O Lord. Let your name be glorified. Lord, let your presence be among us. And Lord, let your name be glorified in the Most High. I ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear people of God, shall we joyfully stand and sing together the opening hymn number 38. 38, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Shall we all stand and sing together?
As we remain standing, let us join in the responsive reading. The responsive reading is taken from United Methodist Hymnal, number 586, entitled, Hear My Prayer, O Lord. Let us read it responsively. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let, Let my cry come, come to thee. Do not hide thy face from me in the in day of my distress. Incline thy ear to me, answer me speedily in the day when I call. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But thou, O Lord, art enthroned forever. Thy name endures to all generations. To hear the groans of the prisoners. So that the people yet unborn may praise the Lord. That men may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth. Of old thou didst lay the foundation of the earth. And the heavens of the they will perish, but thou dost endure. Then we'll all wear out like a garment. Thou changest them like raiment, and they pass away. But thou art the same, and thy years have to end. Glory be to the Father. Now over to our angels to bring the praise and worship to our Lord. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite you to stand with us as we worship this morning, lifting the King of Kings, who has the name that's above every name. His name is Jesus. He is our risen Savior. Does anybody love him today? Amen. That's the greatest commandment he has given us, to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And we display our love towards our Savior in our worship today. Can we all rise up? We honor you, God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
come let's give the world he deserve our glory he deserve our worship he deserves our honor so let us lift our hands as we cry out to him today lord you deserve the glory
let us continue to worship the living god as we offer our prayers to him as the choir sings for us i'll invite those of you who would like to come to the altar for prayers please do come and we shall all call upon the lord Isaiah 40 Have you not known have you not heard has it not been told to you from the beginning have you not understood from the foundations of the earth it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in he brings the princes to nothing he makes the judges of the earth useless he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these blessed words. You're the God who has risen from the dead. You're the one who have done miracles in the past. The one who is going to do miracles even in the present. And lead us through the future as your powerful chosen people. Lord, we bow before you, before this throne of grace, joining the angel armies, worshipping you this morning. We bow before you in adoration and worship. We acknowledge who we are. We inform our minds and we provoke our thinking this morning to who you are. It is not a ritual, it is not a tradition. It is the reality that the God who was, who is, and who will be forever is with us this morning. Your presence is through your Holy Spirit amongst us. You are moving amongst us and we, you have accepted our praises and thanksgiving. Lord, we are imperfect as we are, but yet you are the God who is willingly informing us that you will be present where two or three are gathered. And you are real to us, Lord, this morning. Nothing is impossible to you. You have revealed yourself as one of us 2,000 years ago. You endured the suffering. You endured all the pain. And Lord, you also endured the death on the cross. And you were buried. Today, Lord, we are here because you are resurrected. We are here because of your resurrection power. Lord, as we are together on the second week after the Easter, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. We still rejoice for the power of resurrection upon our lives. No matter what our challenges are, Lord, you are the one who is able and more than able to accomplish things for your glory, honor, and praise. This morning, Lord, as we read from Isaiah 40, 
you are the god who promises to give power to the weak and to those who do who have no might you are going to increase the strength and that is the promise that we are going to claim because we have come to wait upon you wait upon the lord to renew our strength lord we need to be your people as the vbs is observing the heart of the champions lord we are the church who would like to be the champions in every way because of your strength because of who you are because of the resurrection power which you have showered upon us and we thank you we praise you master for this blessed morning that you have counted us into this week and we are here as your people lord this morning we come together in this corporate worship coming from different backgrounds from different challenges from different sufferings lord we have come from different backgrounds and cultures and languages lord we are we are we have come together as one body to bow before you in adoration and worship this morning we are going to cry out unto you for all of our families the families of kmc lord we need our families to become stronger and stronger every day we need to claim the promises that you have promised to each one of us and lord that promises should become real in our lives to that end we commit ourselves our families into thy hands we pray that you continue to strengthen nurture us through your word and your fellowship through the power of the holy spirit so that lord our families may grow and bear much fruit for your glory honor and praise you have called us intentionally into this family of kmc to become your witnesses and witness as your disciples extending your kingdom through this church among the people groups around us and that is a purpose that you have called us lord this morning we acknowledge our calling and also lord we acknowledge the promises lord we want to merge both of them and ask you to strengthen us to convict us to break us melt us and mold us as families so that we may become your people lord this morning we also pray for all those who are sick in our church oh lord lord many of us are going through tough time many of us are in the hospitals for the treatment many of us have come out of the hospital and we are with the treatments unexpected things have happened in our lives and we are not able to handle it and lord as the church we are praying for those of our brothers and sisters who are going through suffering we pray that you touch each one of us and lord we pray that you comfort us in our pain and suffering lord we need your touch upon our sickness so that lord we may be healed completely lord we also pray for those of us who are going through much of weaknesses particularly with regard to addictions and with regard to weaknesses that are not able to handle lord we stand for our brothers and sisters who are going through this unable to share with others we are here calling out on your name as mothers as fathers as brothers and sisters for those who are suffering through addictions lord we pray that you continue to touch and minister to those of them who who needs your help this mass this morning lord let the power of the holy spirit touch upon them and lord set them free from all the bondages that they are going through lord we pray and we commit our wings of this church into thy hands senior citizens men's fellowship women's fellowship youth fellowship young adults and also lord the vbs team and also the sunday school lord we commit each one of them into thy hands thank you for all those people who have come forward to contribute to build up the church according to the age group and lord we pray that you continue to bless the resource persons who are ministering to them strengthen them with your power of the holy spirit and lord let these fellowship give us the strength to move on from day to day so that lord we may stand stronger as your disciples as witnesses for your glory honor and praise and to establish your kingdom on this earth master lord we commit all the wings the ministries of the wings into thy hands be with us and guide us lord this morning we also pray for the leadership of our conference all the bishops and their families and their leadership and lord we also pray for the bangalore regional conference and other regional conferences who are ministering in this land oh lord we pray and commit mci into thy hand yes lord we are we know that we are going through tough times many challenges many tribulations yet lord we know that you are god who is able and more than able who are 
who is willing to help us and also who is in control of the situations. This morning, Lord, we also commit all the leadership of the MCI into the hands. Be with us and lead us, particularly the bishops, the district superintendents, the conference leaders, the pastoral team, and also the laity, including the laity, Lord, we pray that you continue to revive the leadership in the BRCs and also in the MCI so that, Lord, your name be glorified and let your purpose and your intention of establishing the Methodist Church in India, Lord, be fulfilled. And Lord, let the people be blessed by this church. And we also pray this morning for the VBS that is going on in our church from the 11th of this month. And Lord, we thank you for all these committed team of the VBS, particularly the Christian education team, and also all the volunteers, the teachers, who have come sacrificing their time and talent for your glory and honor. Lord, we commit all those children who are coming, particularly those children who are not of, from this church, particularly those children who are not from the faith. Lord, we see many children you have gathered in this church. Help all of us to uh, cater to their spiritual needs and also the needs that they have emotionally, physically, Lord, help us to understand and also, Lord, serve them with all of our hearts and minds. We also thank you for all the donors who are standing by side and helping us to move on the ministry for your glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we commit the church as a whole this morning into thy hands, particularly those of the leaders whom you have chosen to be the pastorate committee members and also the pastorate conference members who will be installed this morning. Lord, we commit each one of them, help them to understand their calling so that, Lord, they may contribute much for the building up of this church and building up of your kingdom through this church among the people groups around us so that, Lord, let this leadership which you have chosen be glorifying and also bringing honor to your holy name. This morning, we commit all the things that is going to happen through the installation Lord, we ask you to lead it so that, Lord, you consecrate and also bless all of us as leaders so that, Lord, we may move forward in your guidance and in your light. Lord, this morning we also commit ourselves as citizens of this land, continue to stand for the elections that is coming ahead this month, Master. Lord, we pray that let your chosen people take over as the leaders, as the government, in the states and in the national uh, level, O oh, Father, we pray that you continue to choose people because, Lord, we know that you are in control of this land and you are going to choose for your glory the people whom you want to serve among the people. And we commit all the arrangements that has made for the elections, Lok Sabha elections this year. Lord, we commit each one of that. And also, Lord, we pray that let the elections happen peacefully across the land so that your name be glorified, Master. Lord, as a church, we also stand for the rains, which is so scarce this year, Master. Lord, the drought has hit the land and we are out of the rains and we need your grace upon us. Open the windows of your heavens, pour out your showers upon us. Lord, we need rains, we need the water, we need the drinking water. The animals need the water, Lord. The, the crops are fading away because there is no water, Master. We stand as a church, as intercessors, to plead you for the rains that is needed across this land, Lord. We need your grace upon us. Unless you give the permission, unless you speak, unless you open the clouds, Lord, this land is not going to receive any rains, Lord, we pray. That only you can open up your clouds and pour out your heavens upon each one of us and upon this land, Lord, we pray. Lord, we also pray for all those persecutions that is happening in the church, in India and across the world. Lord, many people are suffering because of the persecutions. People are hating each other and moving on, Lord, with many agendas on the run. Lord, we pray, let your kingdom, let your power be revealed to each one of us. Those of us who are going through suffering, Lord, we pray that you continue to heal us and comfort us and also, Lord, touch us and provide for our needs. Lord, we pray that you continue to help us, Master, this morning. We also pray for all those people who are going through troubled times, even as they are seated here, those of us who are worshipping us with us online. Lord, we commit each one of us into thy hands. We need your ministry upon us. Many of us are going through problems that are unable to be spoken about. Lord, we are going through financial crisis. We are going through health crisis. 
family crisis, Lord. We are going through relationship crisis. We are going through spiritual crisis, finding answers for our needs and challenges, Lord, but we are not able to find it. Lord, this morning we need your grace upon us. It is not just the time coming on Sunday, spending time here and moving out. We have come here to be touched by your glory. We have come here to touch by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to hear that still small voice which nobody hears. It has to be heard according to my own situations, Master. Many of us are like this. We want that particular word to come to us this morning. We are, have come here in expectation of that particular promise, Master, speak to us. We are here seated with expectation. And those of us who are here on the altar, Lord, they have come to thank you. They may, they may have come to confess their sins. They may have come to give uh, supplication, Lord, before you, Master. Lord, we pray that you touch these people who, have, who are here. They have come with a special request. Maybe something which they are not able to share with, with anybody, they are sharing with you, Lord, Master. Lord, hear our cries as your body. Each one of us who are here need your help. Not one of us are self-sufficient in ourselves. Not one of us know everything that we need to know. Lord, we are dependent totally upon you. We are also dependent on each other. Help us to realize that and move forward. Lord, we need your ministry upon us. We need that particular promise that you have promised in Isaiah. You are the God who is going to give the power to the weak. And we are here to become champions as we are, Master. We need your power to move on. And Lord, we need your grace upon us this morning. We commit each one of us into thy hands and we ask all these prayers in the blessed name of our Savior who taught us to pray while we pray. Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive others trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Let us go for the installation of pastorate committee and pastorate conference members of Koramangala Methodist Church for the conference year 2023-24. As I read out the names, you come forward and stand near the altar in line. And I request Pastor John to give the order of service to the people who are coming forward. Mrs. Sujata John Dinaka, Secretary of Koramangala Methodist Church. Mr. Vijayanan, Treasurer. Mrs. Jean Ravichandran, Chairperson, Committee on Membership and Records. Mr. Rajan John, Chairperson, Committee on Stewardship and Finance. Dr. V.S. Elizabeth, Chairperson, Committee on Education and Christian Nurture. Mr. Jeffrey Dare, Chairperson, Committee on Social Concerns. Mr. Anshuman Roberts, Chairperson, Committee on Lay Activities. Mr. Thomas Kiran Williams, Chairperson, Committee on Property and on Pastoral Charge. Mr. Thomas Joseph, Chairperson, Committee on Peace and Conciliation. Mr. Oswald Maben, Chairperson, Committee on Worship and Music. 
This Prashanti, Chairperson Committee on Ushering. Mr. Jacob Y, Chairperson Committee on Media and Technology. Mrs. Kavita Murgan, Sunday School Superintendent. Mrs. Pramila Vijayanand, WSES President. Mr. Kiran Stephen, Methodist Men's Fellowship President. Ms. Ritika Uday, Methodist Young Adults Fellowship President. Ms. Shreya Rachel, MYF President. Dr. Regini McCadden, Senior Citizens Fellowship President. Additional members to the Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference, Mr. Ravi Rolf. Mrs. Shailaja Stephen, additional member to the Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Sharon Sukumar, additional member to the Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference. Mr. Robin Dev Prasad, additional member to the Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference. Mr. Richard Stephen Sharath Kumar, additional member to the Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Lona Wittenbecker, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Sunil Gladson, additional member to the Pastorate Pastor Conference. Mr. Surendra Grani Olivo, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Ivan Jabez, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Jiglin Crystalite Babu, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Shija Sobi, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Kishore, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Barbara Vegas, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Karan Kundar, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Tarun Emmanuel, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Jay Prakash, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Sheila Arthur, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Sanjeev Das, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mr. Reynolds Praveen Karat, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. Mrs. Daniela, Daniela Vijay, additional member to the Pastorate Conference. You all got the auto service sheets. Dearly beloved, you have been called of God and chosen by this congregation to re assume special responsibilities in the administration of Koramangala Methodist Church. Your duties include many tasks needful for its welfare and for the advancement of the kingdom of God. In addition, all of you share in the duty of counseling with your minister and of assisting him in the leadership of the spiritual and temporal life of the church. Above all, it is your duty as much as you in life, you lies to live before all people as becomes the gospel. Having well considered the nature and purpose of the office to which you have been called. Will you, each of you, accept this responsibility and will you seek to accomplish the work and service it sets before you to honor, to the honor and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ? Response. Let us pray. O Lord our God, who art the only founder and keeper of your church, we thank you that you has called your servants to share in the work of your kingdom. Grant them grace to give themselves wholly to this, their task and service. Grant them sincerity and singleness of mind. Hold ever before them the example of their Lord, who pleased not himself but gave himself up for us all, that sharing his ministry and consecration 
they may enter into his glory guide them in their work of your church prosper their counsels and their labors reward their fidelity with the knowledge that you are using them for the accomplishment of your purpose in Jesus Christ our lord amen kindly turn that side dearly beloved we rejoice to recognize these persons as office bearers of koramangala methodist church for the conference year 2023-24 do all you can to assist and encourage them in these offices into which they now have been inducted giving them at all times your cooperation your counsel and your pr prayers kindly uphold these office bearers of koramangala methodist church in your personal and family prayers so that each one will be used for his glory and for the expansion of god's kingdom through the ministry of koramangala methodist church family turn this side congratulations god bless you god keep you and sustain you with god's grace and strength in each and every step and as he uses you as his instrument for his glory god bless you all thank you stand stand Thank you. There is somebody who has left there. telephone on the altar when they had come for the prayer after the service please collect it from the pastors the portion chosen for today's meditation is taken from paul's letter to ephesians ephesians 2 verses from 1 to 10 Paul's letter to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as others but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god not of works lest anyone should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them may the grace of our lord jesus christ be upon each one of us as we read and hear his gospel as we prepare ourselves to listen to the word of god 
shall we all rise up and sing hymn number 275 sweet hour of prayer as a preparatory hymn shall we all rise to our feet seated. I now invite Reverend Matthew George to please come forward and deliver us the message. <coughs> Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you and praise you, Master, for this blessed privilege the opportunity which you have given to each one of us to worship you, whether in the sanctuary or through online, through this worship service, O oh Master. Lord, as we reflect and meditate upon your word, you speak to us at the point of our needs. Deliver us from all sorts of distractions. Give us grace to have the wisdom and knowledge to understand, apply and practice your word in our life situations, O oh Master. Lord, use me as your humble instrument to proclaim your word with full power and authority and clarity, O Master, submitting and surrendering ourselves, and this time once again into your care. You lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us briefly 
meditate and reflect upon God's word from the portion of the scripture which was read from Paul's letter to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. The topic of this morning message is our redemption from brokenness to blessing. Our redemption, brokenness to blessing. When you travel by flight, if you are sitting at the window seat and look down, all things including huge buildings looks so tiny. When we land, we see things on earth in their actual size. This morning, most of us have seen God's love for us from a distance. We know it's there. We understand that God is love, that he loves sinners. But today, I want to look up close at it and be awed by it in order to see the brightness of God's love we need to do the darkness and brokenness of human condition. Then only Lord's light will shine in each of our hearts we are, that, that we are living in the dark world. So the three points briefly we meditate upon this aspect. Firstly, human condition, brokenness. Verses 1 to 3 of Ephesians 2 we know that what is our condition as human beings. A human today is in a such a horrible state and he is in a very unsafe and catastrophic situation. Human has, a mis, human has misdiagnosed the problem. A misdiagnosis of a disease would be catastrophic. Disastrous. Imagine you go to the doctor with a illness and he gives you a wrong medicine. What will be your condition? Or you need, to, need the right ventricle of your heart to be operated on instead doctor cuts open the left. And who will be in the catastrophic situation? You imagine. Or Imagine you go into the doctor for kidney transplant, he operates on the spinal cord. And many things, we will be in trouble. That would be a disastrous. Imagine you enter an emergency room with a chest pain. The doctor tells you it's only a chest cold. So many times, you know your problem and you need to tell and we need to take get the right treatment so paul apostle paul brings us to verse 1 of ephesians chapter 2 and he gives us that unmistakable diagnosis of human condition in our lives he says here is the cause for cause of all your problems here is the reason for all the war the sadness the sickness and the disease and all death have its root in this. Apostle Paul says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. You were dead in transgressions and your sins. This is an unpleasant, horrible subject. Many times, we are not, we would not like to hear anything of our mistakes, our sins, our wickedness. But we cannot know the greatness of God's love and grace except in the on the backdrop of ugliness of our sin. When we need God's grace, then we value God's love and grace very high in our lives. The Apostle Paul gives the breathtaking and the controversial description of the human condition. It is controversial because many believers that man is basically good. That is the claim. And Paul is very clear, as was his Lord Jesus Christ, that man is at his core fundamentally bad. That we need to accept. Then only we, God's grace is available to you and me. 
Apostle Paul says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. That is our condition. Man is broken because he is senseless. Dead in his trans trespasses and sins, verses 1 and 2, first part, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14, we can refer. By nature, we are born not feeling the degree of shame for transgressing against the glory of God. The Apostle Paul says in verse 1 and 2a, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked or lived. The word dead is being used as a metaphor here, a comparison, and it means to have no power or ability to, to be completely senseless. A dead person has no ability to do anything concerning this world. He cannot make money, he cannot have a family, he cannot work, he is dead. And he has no senses, he cannot see, hear, smell, or feel anything. In the same way, the natural man is dead toward God because of his or her sins. The spiritual man only senses things of God. Something is wrong and we don't see it. We are spiritually dead because of our transgressions and sins. We live in a way that so contrary to our creator God. That we have no feeling for him. We are not concerned enough to stop that what we are doing. Our concern is dead. Have you ever been to a funeral service or a funeral? A funeral is sad because there has been a loss of life. The person you once knew is not with you on earth anymore. You see his or her dead body. There's no life in it. How do you know that life has departed? No life means no perceptions. When death comes, all sensory perceptions are gone. A chocolate ice cream or a black forest cake will not stir up the appetite of a dead man. And who has no life, they cannot enjoy it. When we are dead, we lose all sensory perceptions. The dead can't see, that cannot hear. They cannot talk, they cannot taste, they cannot think or talk or perceive anything. Now we'll come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. If we are not understanding the will of God, then we are spiritually dead because the Holy Spirit is not working in us. We are not cooperating with the Holy Spirit. We are rebellious to the Spirit of God. He is the, such a man is senseless when it comes to sensing the need to please God and he is not able to sense that. He does not feel the weight of his or her sin because he does not see the beauty of God or, or his holiness. He is not compelled at all to adore him. His, he does not see the need to serve him because he is spiritually dead. When we are connected to, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Christ's love dominates over our life. Christ's love compels you, you and me to glorify God and love, the, love God and love each other. That is the difference those who are spiritually alive. The Isaiah chapter 6 we see, Isaiah didn't realize he was a man of unclean lips and he was awakened to see. He said, mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Till that awakened man, Isaiah was blind spiritually. He was not able to sense the presence of the most holy God. 
then he confessed and he was cleansed he was able to understand the things of god through the spirit of god he does not sense the atrocity of his sin he is blind and dead to the need to live for god instead he lives completely for himself breaking god's law trespassing the purpose for which god created him what a sad reality man is dead to god he has no sense at all that he should worship him instead he is very content to live his life totally centered around self and this is the reality of who man really is many times we move we move forward in this world thinking our own selfish things ignoring god's grace guidance love and ignoring the others who are around us who are in need and we move forward arrogantly with pride ignoring the presence of god and everything we take it as granted man is broken because of sinful is sinful dead in his trans trespasses and sins since the word sins here means to miss the mark we all try to reach god's mark of perfection but we constantly miss the mark apostle paul says again in romans chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 like this this righteousness is given through faith in jesus christ to all who believe there is no difference between jew or gentile for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god each one in this world has sinned and fall short of the glory of god there is no difference believer or non believer jew or gentile all is saying there is no difference between jew or gentile the religious or pagan person all have missed god's mark we are dead in trespasses and sins what does it mean to trespass not only do we miss the mark when we try to do good but we actually choose to do evil we trespass god says about certain things do not enter we enter do not do that we do it no trespass he says no trespassing but we trespass trespass theologically the word trespass has the idea of breaking god's law whatever the violation to the will of god is trespass we are going against the will of god that is trespass see another reference in 1 john 3 4 tells us sin is the transgression of the law what is sin if you violate or disobey god's law that is sin and if you are not experiencing god's grace then something is wrong with us god says i am all wise and these are the instructions live by them but we in pride deviate from all the wise instruction of god and we break his law and his instructions more often the spiritually dead are content to trespass god's laws regularly and continually and perpetually because we are satisfied and content with that they are self deceived thinking that breaking god's law will bring blessing and benefit when it brings the opposite they regret the time has gone by that time man is broken because he is enslaved to various kinds of bondages in this world verse 2 and 3 of ephesians chapter 2 we were created to be servants of god but we have indented ourselves to follow other masters three are named in this verse three aspects how we follow in this world first the world second the wicked one and our whims and fancies our fleshly desires man follows world following the course of this world this world is sown enemy of god 
1 John 2.15 says, If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We need to please God, then only we can move as believers and disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this world. The world is the environment that we live in, which happens to be utterly in opposition to God's holiness. It says, now is all that matters, now is all you have. Your life is ultimately, eternally inconsequential or insignificant. You live, enjoy now. You don't matter about the eternity. This is the opportunity. That is the evil influence of this world. You take hold of this opportunity and enjoy and be merry and be happy. So do what you like. It is a world system that is opposed to God. The whole world is in darkness and opposes God. This part encourages human beings to continue in their rebellion against God. It is the group think of the communities that oppose God. It is not only a one family or one individual's problem, it is a group thing, it's a group community problem. Sometimes we worship God in the sanctuary, but our heart and mind are very far from the presence of God. We are not able to enjoy the light of Christ in our life because we are in darkness. Unless and until you and I realize the condition which we are in, that is darkness, and that is very path pathetic and horrible, then only the Christ's light will shine in our lives. Man follows the wicked one. Second one, follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Verse 2, second part. Jesus said to the Pharisees, as he could say of all men, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. We need to realize and recognize whom we belong. Are we pleasing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Or are we pleasing the wicked one? Then, our spiritual stand will be declared wherever you and I are placed. You may not understand, but people will look at your testimony and witness. And if you are pleasing the Christ, people will glorify the Lord. He is a, such a blessed man who walks in the Lord. If you are trespassing the commands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and following the wicked one, then people will curse you and me. Whoever you may be, whether you are a big preacher or a lay person, same, it will be applied to you and me. If you are preaching, if you are not practicing, then that is another big trouble and judgment to each one of us who are preachers. So we need to be very careful. The dark ruler who roams unseen spiritual realm is Satan. He is one who brings evil influences to bear upon the world of men. Satan will not come in a big gigantic form to you and me. He will influence the people around you, family, to create an argument through that you will trespass many things. You lose your control. You will sin. We need to have the patience to listen and trust God in every difficult situation. Then only we are able to handle any situation which we face in our lives. Because many times you and I are not able to handle our situation completely. We need to surrender ourselves to the Lord. Lord is able and more than able to handle anything, any, anywhere, in any people's life. And he is the sovereign Lord of our lives. And he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Human follows his own whims. After wicked ones, we have a fleshly desires. 
we look at others we desire we need to the have that first we need to have the contentment what god has given to each one of us don't compare yourself with others according to the grace given to you and me we have everything let us not jealous about the other people who are around us having more things if they have more things they are, may have more troubles so we need to understand all of us also lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature deserving the wrath of god verse 3 first the human condition brokenness secondly god's compassion unmerited love when we realize our condition god's unmerited love god's compassion is available to you and me verses 4 to 6 ephesians chapter 2 there was nothing in any of us that would cause god to love us there is no righteousness in me and you that god should love us he does not love us because we are good he loves us because he is good he is gracious he is accepting as we are and he is giving chance after chance and opportunity after opportunity to correct ourselves renew ourselves revive ourselves in the strength of the lord but in order to see god's love we must realize god's love is engaging or attractive are we experiencing that attractive god's love in our lives god meets us where we are we no need to go any pilgrimage centers to attract the god's love wherever you are there god's love is available to you and me through our lord and savior jesus christ was three pains a terrifying picture of where we all are by nature and by choice if the chapter ended with verse 3 we would all be in trouble and we all once lived the passions of our flesh carrying out desires of the body and the mind were by nature children of wrath like the rest of the mankind if god deals with us according to even just one of our sins we would be lost forever he is merciful he is gracious when we realize and confess he is ready to forgive us he removes our transgressions as far as from the east is from the west thus that far he removes us when we realize and confess and come to the experience the love of god which attracts us we say with the david in psalm 130 verse 3 if you lord should mark iniquities o lord who could stand nobody can stand before the lord if he counts our sins we need to confess and we need to get rid of this god has dealt with us the way we deserve has not dealt with us the way is we deserve he meets us the right where we are never we would we have sought after god we are ungrateful many times we are law we were lost but we thought we were okay we were self sufficient we thought we didn't need god because we have everything in the world if god takes your breath tonight where is your wealth where is my wealth and positions we need to understand it is by the grace of god we are breathing and we are in the sanctuary this morning and we went right on sinning day after day how many sins did we commit even one day god has not dealt with us after our sins he engages us where we are where were we we were dead in trans trespasses and sins we were influenced and controlled and by satan the prince of the power of the air 
not all lost people are indwelt by satan or by the demons but they are all subject to his influence through the corrupt world system if we are sinners we are not all demon possessed but we are influenced by the corrupt things which are around us we need to resist and flee away from this corrupt things then only we can enjoy the grace and power of his holiness in our lives so we were the children of disobedience many times we were caught up in trespasses and sins and therefore children of wrath so we have seen how god's love is engaging he meets us right where we are he loves us because he wants to love us god's love secondly is extravagant is very rich we can't equate anything with god's extravagant love our text in ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 says but because of his great love for us god who is rich in mercy made us alive with christ even when we were dead in transgressions because of his rich mercy and his great love we are alive we are protected we are reconciled we are cleansed in the precious blood of our lord and savior jesus christ what is that caused god to bring us back from death his rich mercy or in you know, other words is extravagant love romans chapter 5 verse 8 says but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us we were not righteous when christ died for the world we are sinners and we have sinned and transgressed and trespassed against the will of god when we were worthy of nothing but god's wrath god demonstrated his richness martin luther a great great reformer say said we all carry in our pocket christ nails who crucified christ you did it i did it christ died for us are you aware that you have christ nails in your pocket still look at the love god has for us we are crucifying our lord again and again through our transgressions and wicked ways i remember for hours of the crushing darkness god's wrath was upon christ he was hanging between heaven and earth his mouth was not complaining about the wicked sinners like you and me who put him there on the cross as isaiah 53 verse 7 says he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent so he opened not his mouth he was silently offered himself on the cross for your sake and my sake on good friday we meditated upon these verses so but christ did open his mouth he was not completely silent listen to his words to his father on our behalf and we see in luke chapter 23 verse 34 father forgive them they do, they know not what they do even in that suffering he remembered you and me and forgiven our sins and transgressions he blotted out our transgressions pardoned our offenses forgiven our sins are we ready to receive that pardon with complete surrender to glorify god what kept jesus christ on the cross what was it that held him there as he bore every ounce of wrath of god for you and me he became our eternal shield he is our refuge he is our fortress as felt every ounce of agony there was one thing that made it all worth 
to it to him he loved you and me unconditional love only when we respond we are able to receive that agape sacrificial and great extravagant love in our lives he loved you long before you came into this world he will love you and when 10000 ages have passed christ love for you held him there on the cross it was an engaging love it was an extravagant love and the god's love thirdly is an empowering love it empowers you removes all fears the false fears fills us with a godly fear to receive the godly wisdom and knowledge to understand things of god the world has also has fear that will enables us to tremble and we fall but at the same time godly fear will gives us the grace to have the wisdom from god to understand the things of god and his knowledge our text in 4 and 5 say verse says but god being rich in mercy because of great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive together with christ god's love brings life that is the empowerment of his love jesus said when we come to know him we pass from death to life we dead in trespasses we dead in our sins but in christ we are alive we are we are coming to experience that extravagant love in john chapter 11 verse 25 and 26 very clearly says jesus said to her i am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die do you believe this he has a power to give life he can revive us and also deliver us from the bondage of sin and wickedness human condition is a broken brokenness secondly the god's compassion unmerited love finally god's new creation salvation those who are in christ are a new creation second corinthians 5:17 old has gone he has recreated us Verses 7 to 10 describes about our salvation in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter 2. The focus of our salvation was 7. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. When we continue in communion with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, spiritually we blessed and active through the power of the holy spirit we receive the immeasurable richness of god's grace and kindness in each one of our lives that is the focus of our salvation second the failure of work works salvation the failure of works salvation verse 8 and 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god not the result of works so that no one may boast we cannot boast because we have received salvation because of my ability or achievements it is the work of our lord and savior jesus christ on the calvary's cross nothing else salvation by works has already failed one sin is all that takes how many sins did take for lucifer to be cast out of heaven i want just one sin even he did not commit he thought in his mind he desired the place of the most holy one by that time he was cast out of heaven of the holy presence if we are not mending our ways god's wrath will come upon us like a fire when we mend we receive god's grace immeasurably 
in each one of our lives. You might say, I will live a good life to make up for it. You can't live a good enough life. One sin separates you forever from a holy and most righteous God. You committed that first sin a long time ago. You were conceived in sin and born in it. It is too late. Only that cleanse will, cleansing will happen through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he touches through the power of the Holy Spirit our lives. Our unrighteousness will be removed. Till such time, the inborn sin and wickedness will continue. This is the right time. If we have not aligned our ways, let us submit and surrender ourselves and seek his forgiveness and pardon so that we will be richly blessed. Is there anyone here who can claim that he is already saved by the works? So far in life, has anyone here been without sin? Look at your lives, examine your conscience, observe your words, your thoughts, your imagination, your motives. For all these things will be brought to account on the last day. Is there a man here that does good and sins no more? Scripture declares there is no, none that does good, no one, not even one. All we like sh sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. The fountain of true salvation, verse 10, first part. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ. We are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus to bear good fruits do good works, to bring glory, honor, praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As James 1.18 says, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Salvation is a miracle. It is a new birth. John chapter 3 verse 3 says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Similarly, we can compare Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh, that's an act of creation, that's a sovereign act of God, that you and I cannot have. The worldly Medical doctors may replace wall, the heart, everything, but the heart condition may not be replaced by any human power or force. Only God can replace your heart and mind and thinking how we need to prepare for the righteous things to do. Only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, can be able to replace your heart and my heart and my mind and your mind so that we can have the mind of Christ to understand things of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of the creation of man. God breathed into man the breath of life and the man became a living soul. In the same way, when we are saved, God breathes into us the breath of his Holy Spirit and we become alive spiritually to do good works. He breathes into us the fills and fills us with the Spirit and for the rest of our lives we are possessed of His Spirit doing His very will, bringing glory to His name. Finally, the fruit of the true salvation verse 10, second part. Christ Jesus to do good works which prepared in advance for us to do. So we need to bear much fruit, good fruit, for his glory, so that joy of the Lord will be complete in us. And we are bringing glory to his name. Can Martin Luther tried everything to try to gain God's favor. He slept on the hard floors and also going without food. 
even climbing a staircase to roam on his hands and knees but it was not benefited to him his teachers in the monastery told him that he was doing enough to have peace with with god but he had no peace even after all this practices his his sense of sin was too great martin luther one day turned to romans chapter 116 the just shall live by faith that word has transformed martin luther the great reformation took place so we are all worshiping in the protestant church now because of his transformation all the traditional bondage has been broken and he became a blessing brokenness from brokenness to blessing and we how are we experiencing that blessing are we still in our brokenness let us examine as we continue god gives to the needy the sinner the righteousness which he needs by faith Luther no longer felt the wrath of God but the love of God the love of God entered his heart and life and changed the world dear friends are you feeling God's wrath today look at again at Romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 but God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from god's wrath through him god's grace and extravagant love is available to all those who recognize our condition and confess and seek his forgiveness and pardon with repentance one day we will all stand before god to give a moral accounting to him for all our actions Do you feel God's condemnation instead of his love? Listen to Romans chapter was 8 chapter chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are confessing your problems and sins and wickedness and my problems and my sins and wickedness then we are reconciled to experience is grace and there is no condemnation if we you and i continue in that sin that grace may not be available to you and me you are the apple of god's high you are his beloved you are the precious jewels in the crown of his mercy and love he has loved you with an everlasting love yes you are born condemned dead in sins but because of his great love for us who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace you have been saved you are saved not because you are good but because god is gracious towards us how are we experiencing the love this morning in each one of our lives still are we searching for peace are we confused this is the right time to submit and surrender ourselves examine our lives looking into the mirror of god's word so that exact reflection of our nature will be revealed let us submit and surrender ourselves spend few moments in silence and after that i'll pray amen God of mercy and rich in love we humbly submit and surrender ourselves and we confess our condition that we are in 
sins and transgressions and in darkness o master lord remove the darkness from us and fill us with your light so that well we come into your presence with boldness and courage and faith to worship you and receive the gift of salvation in your name and move forward resisting all kinds of evil forces and claiming victory in your name o master empower us continuously through your love to be a triumphant ones in your name for your glory o master many times we have ignored your will ignored your commandments disobeyed your lord instructions o master our mercy upon us o master lord you lead us and guide us enable us and empower us to direct us to walk with you through the power of the holy spirit lifting your name on high o master as faithful disciples in this world o lord jesus we humbly submit and surrender our souls once again into your care in jesus name we pray amen I greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are attending our service for the first time, if you are here, I request you to stand and int- to introduce yourselves. We would like to recognize and welcome in our midst. Anyone? think some brothers are there give the mic good morning everyone my morning. name is ulrich i'm from germany it's good to be with you thank you brother welcome to kormangla methodist church fellowship we're happy to have with us your friend is also with you i think Some years ago I was already once here but I enjoyed thanks for Okay God bless you thank you thanks for coming Shall we all stand and greet one another with the love of Christ and a smile Thank you. Is there anybody worshiping with us celebrating your birthdays or wedding anniversaries this week? If you are here, please stand and we will wish and pray for you. Okay, one more thing. The uh, this Sunday altar flowers are donated by Mrs. Rita Kuruvilla as a thanksgiving for her daughter Ramya. as she is celebrating a birthday we'll also remember her also in as we pray on behalf of kormangla methodist church family we wish you a happy birthday and a blessed anniversary those families who are celebrating the anniversary god bless you let us pray most holy and gracious loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you master for the very gift of life to each one of us Lord we come into your presence with heart full of gratitude for the life which you have given to us especially we uphold the dear ones who are celebrating their birthdays this week oh master continue to bless them and put an edge around them with the fire of the holy spirit thank you lord for being with them thus far in every aspect of their life so oh master lord as they look on to you pray at your presence hear their prayer and answer their prayers and fulfill their desires so oh master lord we commit them as they celebrate your goodness and faithfulness in this new year oh lord bless them abundantly give them grace to glorify your holy name and also at the same time i especially commit the families who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries this week oh master continue to bless them guard them and protect them 
continue to lead them in, in every aspect of their lives, O Master. Lord, you have established these families, O Master. Let your love dominate over their lives so that, Lord, they will love you more and more, love each other, and magnifying your most holy name. Provide all their needs from your bountiful supply. Keep all of them in good health and strength to taste and see that you are so good in their lives, O Master. Submitting and surrendering ourselves once again into your care. We give you all glory, honor, praise unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kindly be seated. God bless you. Dear people of God, here are a few announcements for this week. Kindly take note that next Sunday worship service will be at 9 a.m. and it will be live streamed. This will be a VBS Sunday and VBS team will lead and participate in the worship service. VBS 2024 was started from 11th April 2024 and we request you to kindly uphold a VBS team uh, at 2024 led by VBS director uh, Mrs. Uh, Rashika Anshuman and all the children in your prayers. You are also encouraged to contribute generously as the Lord leads you towards the expenses of VBS 2024. Registration, rupees 300 per child, will not be sufficient for the expenses. We have to spend approximately rupees 1,500 per child for 10 days. And this is about the VBS, and I request uh, a VBS director and VBS teachers and uh, uh, VBS uh, volunteers to stand. They are doing uh, very uh, good work. If you are here, please stand. VBS teachers, VBS volunteers. I uh, will thank you. We'll just uh, say a word of prayer to you. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for VBS teachers, volunteers, and uh, all those, and director especially, and uh, uh, the worship team to our Father. They are doing a marvelous job, O Father. You continue to bless them and continue to use them mightily, O Father, so that, Lord, your children may be benefited and know you deeply, O Master, and may accept you as your personal Savior. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Senior Citizens Fellowship uh, Bible Study will be on every Monday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and Reverend Uday Kumar will be taking the study. Online KMC Bible Study on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and Zoom link will be shared in KMC WhatsApp group, and it is also on the YouTube. Uh, WSCS Online Bible Study every Friday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. MMF Bible study will be on Zoom every second and fourth Saturday at 8 a.m. And Reverend Uday Kumar is taking the study on growing to maturity. Young Adults Fellowship will meet at Church CEB All physically every second and fourth Saturday on, uh, of, the, of the month at 6.30 p.m. Methodist Youth Fellowship will meet uh, after the worship service every Sunday except on first Sunday. KMC morning prayers on Zoom from Monday to Friday will be at uh, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Kindly contact pastors for the pastoral visits and as well as for the home Holy Communion. Uh, you can take this opportunity and uh, those who are in the old age home or those who are sick and those who could not come to the uh, communion service, you can ask pastor so that we can come and pray and give the Holy Communion to them. Your prayer concerns can be dropped in the prayer box at the entrance and we will uphold you in our prayers. And at last, kindly drop your offerings and tithes into the offering bags or by scanning UPI code, you can scan through uh, the printouts and also you can transfer it online. And at last we will stand as we sing the closing hymn and the offertory hymn.
number 159, I am thine, O Lord. And during this hymn, we will be collecting the offertory. And I request Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Kiran Stephen, and Ms. Rajan John to please help us to collect the offertory. Jeffrey, Ivan, Kiran, and Rajan John. Shall we all stand and sing together the closing hymn number 159? I am thine.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for this blessed time and opportunity which are given to each one of us to join this worship service, whether in the sanctuary or through online. Sing praises unto you, pray at your presence, and listen to your voice. And also, Lord, enable and empower us to confess our condition and seek your grace and guidance to come out of that to experience your rich grace, mercy, and love and light, O Master. Lord, continue to be with each one of us, O Master. Revive and refresh us to bear much fruit unto you as your disciples, O Master. And also at this time, I especially commit the, the members of Pastorate Committee and Pastorate Conference of KMC who are installed today to take up the responsibilities, O Master. Bless them, anoint them, and use them as your mighty instruments for your glory and for the development of this church and the expansion of your kingdom, O Master. As we offer these tithes and offering at, at your presence, O Lord, Lord, accept as we are, and accept this offering and use it for your glory, O Lord Jesus. We humbly submit and surrender ourselves that the entire week into your care, you direct us to arise and shine for you, be a witness for your glory, O Master. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now may the eternal grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, great love of God and sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.